Hey guys, <clears throat> so I don't know if, uh, about you, but I got lured from the email and from multiple message board conversations about the new Courtney launch. It's very exciting. There's a lot of crazy stuff that she comes with, including, <sighs> this is the most amazing thing. She came with, she comes with a little mini, mini Molly doll, a mini Molly book, a mini Molly red box that Molly used to come with. And the most exciting thing of all, a mini very first issued Pleasant Company I assume 1986 catalog. Um, and apparently she like circles her favorite things in the catalog. So I had already thought about how fun it would be <laughs> in my mind. I thought this would be pretty fun to um, sort of just do a walk through the catalog. A lot of us haven't seen this catalog in a long time. I went on a crazy eBay binge and um, looked around for the oldest catalog I could find um, for, you know, not too much money. I think this is a 1995. Let me see what else I've got because I actually kind of looked at an older one. Just to sort of go back to the days that I remember, but oh yeah, so this is a 1992. Not as much fun on the cover. I wasn't, I was much more this girl than this girl when I was growing up. I really just wanted to be Molly. Look at her. Oh, except in, and not so much this like, I want to be a cool girl of today. I mean, I wanted to be a cool girl of today, but it was just nowhere pos near possible for me. And I mean, I'm sorry, let's, let's, let's be serious. I don't know if these were actually the cool girls. Um, they were the girls I completely relate to, but I have a feeling there were some other folks that were a little bit more popular at school than this one. But um, anyways, okay, so let's, let, what should we talk about? So this one has, this one had the introduction of Felicity, and that is definitely not what I recall. So what I recall when I first got this catalog was <gasps> Kirsten Larson. Look at her. Is she Kirsten or Kirsten? I've heard her pronounced Kirsten. Sorry, I always just sort of read her name as Kirsten. Um, but just look at her. God, can you see this? I mean, I, sorry, I guess, I don't know, should we do this since we're going to be looking at this in a big horizontal screen? I don't know, but look at that. Centerfolds for eight-year-olds. Look at that. Oh, oh my God. Okay, so let's see. Your Kirsten doll, Kirsten, I'm just gonna say Kirsten. Your Kirsten doll has bright blue eyes that open and close and beautiful blonde hair that you can brush, braid, and tie with ribbons. Look at those ribbons. These are the ribbons, ugh. She has a huggable soft body with head, arms, and legs that you can pose. She can sit, stand, and hold the accessories of her collection. Kirsten comes in a blue cal calico dress. <laughs> Look at that. First time I ever heard the word calico, for sure. Beautiful. Can we see details here? Look at that. So pretty. I don't know if you guys know about the Kirsten Project. This amazing person who I heard um, an interview on the American Girl podcast, which you guys, everybody needs to listen to right this very second. Um, uh, she, uh, there was, I think, an episode, a special episode. They talked to this woman. I don't know her name. I wish I did. I'll look it up. Um, and she has she has a history of um, fashion design and specifically historical fashion and um, she has made it her mission over the last year or two to um, recreate an adult size Kirsten's wardrobe to the point to the detail of okay well let's see I see that there are one two three four five flowers across the, the bust of this doll's dress. So how can we make that proportionate to human size and to adult human size? And she has figured it out. You guys need to check this out. I'll link it down below, but oh my God, amazing. So anyways, here she is. Look at Kirsten, look at all the stuff she comes with. Oh, so she came with, let's see. I could continue reading to you, but I don't think that's gonna be fine. Um, so let's see, she's got brown striped stockings that are covered by fancy pantalettes. 
this little doodad. I should, I don't know if I've made it clear. I never got it all, you guys. I never got it all. Ugh. Never. Um, certainly added up what all this stuff would cost on a regular basis. Gave my mom the lowdown on a regular basis. She laughed me out of the room on a regular basis, but... So I never knew what it was like to hold this doll, but let's see. So I imagine these are cute little frilly undies. Let's see if we can take a peek. Let's see if these are, oh, Samantha. Oh boy, you're next. Um, do they tell you what these little undies look like? They do not. They don't really show you, but you can only imagine. Um, she comes with this little, um, this little, what do we call this? Oh, her accessories. Sold separately. Tuck her embroidered hanky in her apron pocket and tie her spoon bag. <sighs> Can't for the life of me remember why she has a spoon bag. Maybe she needs to do some cooking in the, in the kitchen. I don't know. I did do a little bit of, um, as I was following along with the American Girl podcast, I did do a little bit of rereading. I, I, I went on to eBay, bought every single book in the AGOG collection. Um... And I did a little bit of, I, I, I think I reread a little bit of the first book, but can't remember why she has that spoon bag. Um, okay, it comes with a wooden spoon. Swedish farmers had just enough, oh, I see, here we go. Swedish farmers had just enough knives and forks for their own families. When they went to feasts or celebrations, they took their own silverware with them in a spoon bag. Ty Kirsten's red-checked sunbonnet. Look at how sweet that is. Sunbonnet on her head and hang the amber-colored heart around her neck. It's Kirsten's keepsake given to her by her grandmother before she left for America. 20 bucks, folks. Back in 1992, this was 20 bucks. 20 bucks for these things. <sighs> 82 bucks for Kirsten plus the paperback. Um, you could get a hardcover for 88. Um, look at these little shows. Let's talk about these shoes. Oh, soft brown lace-up boots complete her outfit. Mm. <laughs> and I mean, let's talk about the writing. I just love it. Her brown striped stockings are covered by fancy, fancy pantalettes. In Kirsten's time, girls took pride in keeping pantalettes snowy white, a hard thing to do in muddy fields and cabins on the prairie. Soft brown lace-up boots complete her outfit. Your Kirsten doll comes, as shown above, with a meet Kirsten book. Look at how happy she is to be in your home. Wait, am I doing this right? Can you see this? Yeah. Look at that. Oh, God. <sighs> okay, let's move on. Call to order. That's what you had to do. You had to call to order. I think this came with a... Here we go. You had to... Let's see, this is how you share this. This is how you ordered. You had to put stuff down on this little ordering slip. And then you had to call them. You had to call them and tell them what you wanted. Not that I ever got to make that phone call, but... All right, here we are, moving on. We are at Kirsten's school story. <sighs> she meets Miss Winston, her new teacher. You guys have really got to listen to that podcast. They talk all about Miss Winston. They meet... <clears throat> she meets Singing Bird, the Indian girl. The indigenous girl. Um, when Singing Bird suggests running away forever... Kirsten must decide where she belongs. Kirsten learned some important lessons in school and something even more important about herself. Okay, I remember exactly where I was. I think we were on our way to church and I was about eight or nine years old. And there was that little vignette in the book and Kirsten learns a lesson. I was reading that on the way to church, like a good little eight-year-old. Um, and there was that little vignette of what, the, what this thing was. This was her pioneer school bunch. They called it a Tina. Uh, it's called it in Sweden. It's called a Tina. Tina. Kirsten's father might have carved and decorated hers with its traditional wood burn design. But God, let's talk about Pleasant Company food. Because look at this. I mean, they don't. I know it's, you know, grumpy old people like me always say this, but they do not make the food like this anymore. Not that I ever had this to hold to see what it actually felt like. Oh my goodness. Look at how adorable all this was. Oh my god. Okay, so let's talk about this. <sighs> Pack a lunch for Kirsten in this charming oval wooden box. In Sweden, it's called a Tina. Kirsten's father might have carved and decorated hers with its traditional wood burn design. Pioneer food was simple but hearty. For lunch, give Kirsten a piece of bread, a sausage, a wedge of cheese, 
and a juicy wild apple. Look at that, what a adorable woven napkin. Kirsten's make-believe food is tucked in the tina with a woven napkin. This whole thing, run you 18 bucks. Okay, oh, she's got this adorable red, red dress. Oh, Mrs. Arson probably made Kirsten's red. Oh, Mrs. Arson, her, 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 her mother, not Miss Winston. Okay, Mrs. Arson probably made Kirsten's red print school dress out of leftover material from her own, since girls didn't. Look at all this historical information they're giving you in just a catalog. Since girls didn't wear jackets, Kirsten had a plaid shawl that you can tie around her so she won't get cold in her long walk to school across the prairie. Her outfit includes dark blue woven hair ribbons. So sweet. Can you imagine being the girl that had a whole collection of Kirsten's hair ribbons? Oh, Kirsten's school bunch. I mean, I swear to God, you guys, I don't know about you, every August, I would just go nuts with school supplies for myself in the 80s. Do you know how much I freaked out over these school supplies that came in these catalogs? Oh my God. Okay, Kirsten's school bench. There were no desks in Kirsten's one room schoolhouse. So she sat on a hickory log bench cut from trees in the forest right outside the door. We won't talk about who lived in those forests, but that's all right. A little stream ran past Powder Keg School, and Kirsten loved to have Miss Winston send her to fetch a bucket of water so the class could have a cool drink from the wooden ladle. Look at that. A trip to the stream also meant she might see her Indian friend, Singing Bird. All right, and let's talk about the slate bag and supplies. I haven't been paying attention to what this looks like over here, but I think it looks okay. All right, slate bag and supplies. Pencils and paper were scarce in early country school, so Kirsten did her lessons on a slate. When you play school with her, you'll see that the slate pencil really works. So it comes with a wiper too. Oh my goodness, where's her little slate pencil? Look at that. It's her slate pencil. Um, when you play school with her, you'll see that a ruler completes the school's school supplies that come in her brown calico slate bag. Read a tiny version of the original book that Kirsten used when she learned to read English. When Kirsten does a good job in school, you can give her the rewards of merit, just like she earned in the story. These were the report cards for girls and boys back then. 18 bucks. Okay, so where are we at now? For 88 bucks to get that whole kit. I mean, honestly, I would have liked the paperback, so 82. Let's say 82. <sighs> I didn't have a cut on my calculator with me, guys. Sorry, I'm, just not, I'm not gonna pretend like I can do all this math by myself, but it's not running too much so far. 18, 20, 20, 40, 40, 40. It's, I mean, okay, we're, we're getting up there for school supply toys, but all right. Are you guys still interested? Maybe I'll stop it at the Christmas story and I'll do a part two after this. Okay, Kirsten's surprise. She becomes Santa Lucia. Is it Lucia? I mean, in, in Italy it'd be Lucia. I, I mean, I'll, maybe it's Lucia? 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 Who knows? Um, Saint Lucia, I'll call her. Um, it's just so pretty. Oh, weren't the Christmas stories just amazing? I mean, as an adult, I would seek out these Christmas stories and read them in December because they were just so much fun to get in the Christmas spirit. Um, okay, so something happens. There's a blizzard. Let's see what happens. They have to go on a dangerous journey with her papa. Um, oh, she really, really, really wants to go into town to pick up that trunk that was on the ship across the Atlantic. And it was like, hidden. it was in town. It, they had stored it in town and then they had to go. She was like, no, Papa, I really wanna go and get it. And he was like, no, there's gonna be a wizard. And she's like, no, I wanna go. And they go anyways and um, get caught in the blizzard. And I remember there was a scene I got the little general store. I guess they had picked up the trunk and then on the way back, that's when the blizzard struck. I don't know, I can't remember. I'll have to read back, re go back and read. Um, and there was like a little scene at the general store where he bought her some cinnamon candy. And I just remember that was just such a wonderful sensory thing to read about. Just this like cinnamon candy that melted in her mouth. Um, wow. Okay, so she's got this Saint Lucia Lucia gown. 
In Sweden, on the darkest day of the year, the oldest daughter dresses up as a Saint Lucia, Lucia, it's going to be a hard one, Lucia girl. She wears a beautiful white gown with a red sash and a wreath of glowing candles to symbolize the coming of brighter days. On Saint Lucia day, she wakes her family before daylight and takes them coffee and sweet buns. How sweet! Your Kirsten doll can wear her long white gown trimmed with a bright red sash. Ah! adult version of this that I wanted so bad. Where is it? Do they have one? Oh, look at that. Oh, could you imagine <laughs> showing up to the Christmas Eve service? <laughs> hey guys, it's me, it's St. Lucia. I mean, I'm sorry, there's like hardly really a setting that you wouldn't look like an idiot in this, but oh, how much fun would that be? Okay, um, St. Lucia's wreath. Look at this. This thing goes for a lot of money, a whole lot more than 14 bucks on eBay. Kirsten's crown and glory is the traditional St. Lucia Greek wreath with red ribbons, lush greens, plump berries, and six tall wooden candles. Imagine how proud you she'll feel how beautiful she'll look when you put it on her. Mm-hmm. You do look beautiful. Look at you, Kirsten. It's so pretty. St. Lucia's tray. Kirsten's blue tray holds a wooden candle to light her way on the darkest day of the year when she carries two make-believe St. Lucia buns to her family. A heart-shaped candle holder, a sprig of greenery, and a checkered cloth right in the tray. Look at how pretty all these things are. God. Kirsten's doll. You know, in that podcast, they talk all about, of course they have to have a doll because these are dolls. It's totally meta. Of course they have to make sure that the dolls have dolls. So, okay, Kirsten's doll. What would Christmas be without a doll? Kirsten loves Sari, the rag doll she brought all the way from Sweden. Since dolls were handmade in Kirsten's time, Sari's dear face is hand-stitched. A tiny five-inch doll for Kirsten and you to treasure for 14 bucks. Look at these little stripey stockings. Did we talk about these already? Striped stockings. Oh. <laughs> okay. We'll stop there for now.